You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. We're almost done. We're almost done with our Year of Love series. I can't believe we're almost done. Just yesterday, it seems like we started it. Another great year of the another great year with this series. Another great time with Eric and Sarah. Eric, how the hell are you doing? I'm excited to watch this because this officially was my first time watching it to completion as well, too. I don't think I've ever watched this movie front to back. Uh, and I was able to, of course, uh, watch it how you're meant to watch it, on an airplane. Sarah, have you seen this movie before? This is my second time this year watching this movie. Uh, I would say like maybe two and a half times now because I watched it on our flight to Amsterdam. Eric watched it on our flight back to Detroit and I half watched his because I enjoyed it so much. And I enjoyed it so much that I watched Sleepless in Seattle on my way back to Detroit because it happened to be on the plane and I just could not get enough of Meg Ryan rom-coms. It's a, that was another Nora Ephron, uh, Ephron movie as well. Uh, same writer. <sighs> and she also did You've Got Mail. Uh. Okay. Jordan Syme says so much. Yeah, I, I okay, so I, I, I guess I missed the boat here. I don't get it. Change my mind. Why is this not a small bag of popcorn? But it, really? It's yeah, classic. Like... It's, it's highly quotable. It is, uh, you know, some deep thinking here. Uh, you know, talking about, um, uh, oh, gosh, my brain is still on jet lag. I'm going to blame it on that. Um not ethics, but anyway, we'll get there. I'll it's get been there. a week. It's been a week. Shh. Well, hold on. Then, then I'll get I'll get the motor going here, when you can figure it out. But I I think that it's just because this movie is just well, it's charming. It, it shows the quirks of love, especially in a adult comedy. These are two adults, you know, and this is kind of them behaving as such. There's there's therapy in this. It's a cathartic piece of, of romance there because of how silly and somehow innocent love can be where, you, you know, there's the realization of you don't know what you got till it's gone in this movie, which is a, is a pretty good thing as well, too, that often the, uh, uh, the best friend is uh, the one you're supposed to be with. There's there's a lot to unpack in this movie, and it just seems to be kind of like one of those, uh, I don't know, almost like a Woody Allen type of thing, just to kind of like, hey, here's a piece of life. This is how it works out. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And it to show it in little uh, bits of story, rather than it being just kind of one sit-down piece, I, I think it helps. This movie skips around, so it's not like it's... Um, you know, I guess a, a traditional movie that we we would see happening in like a weekend or like a, a month or something like that. This is, I don't know, more real life. It happens. It takes time. Fifteen years, right? Or how long did it say? Years, Twelve years. Twelve years and three months. So okay, I, I, okay. There, there is what I say. Kind of in the same part of like, uh, I, I don't know. Did you not like any other Nora Ephron movies like uh, like the ones I mentioned before? Silkwood is another one. Mill Streep. Yeah, they they uh they all kind of sound the same. Hey, look, I'm not trying to be Mr. Sourpuss here, and I feel like I've been that throughout the whole Year of Love series, uh, without naming a few. I, I just I guess I just don't see what you guys see. I guess this is another ten things I hate about you. I thought the characters were bland and blah. Um, I did I couldn't relate to any of them. The way that Billy Crystal spoke was not at all how people speak. Uh, Meg Ryan could not at all for the life of her just give in to her temptation. Stop with this nonsense of her being a goody goody two shoe girl when she really isn't. There's there's a woman in there desperate to get out, right? Um, my wife pointed out Carrie Fisher was in this, and I was like, okay, I mean, why was she even in this? I mean, I guess she needed something after Star Wars. Um, and the best friend with the mustache, yeah, I don't know. It just it just didn't seem. I just don't get it, like. I don't even know why the fake orgasm seems that big of a deal. Is it because a woman fakes an orgasm in the middle of a of a restaurant? I, I mean, is is that it? Is that because 
because it's 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 uh, it's tempting. It's, it's, I mean, this is more of a commentary on kind of the the men be you know the men versus girls kind of boy versus girls. I mean, and uh, that probably was just more of a necessarily it was a joke if anything, just because of how believable some men think that they are, how uh, skilled that they are of a lover, just because they think that they're able to know what an orgasm is first off. Um, from a female, and then I don't know. Meg Ryan just kind of went up again. Also, it, it does show that character really becoming less of, of a of a tight person. She comes, you know, she fakes an orgasm in the middle of a restaurant where she probably normally wouldn't do that. She's this different person around when uh, she met Harry. And again, the bigger joke of it at the end of it is when the older lady says, "I'll have what she's having." It seems very. Very New York. I don't. I don't know what to tell you. If it's just like, um, it might be just be of the times. Like maybe it was a funnier movie back in when did this movie come out? Eighty nine. Eighty nine. Maybe it was just a funnier. It was a simpler time back then, and um, you know, one where Harry Connick Jr. was was just playing the beats on the piano, playing the keys, and it's all about city that that kind of New York life. Harry Connick Jr. Is that the dude from American Idol? Yeah, no. is he? He's a he's what? a judge now, right? He's on one of the. What? Yeah, he was he was a judge on Idol, so that's why I was oh, like, "What?" I did not know that. Is he? Yeah. On, is he on Idol? He was. All right, so okay, so again, change my mind. Teach, tell me why this is deserve a small. So first of all, we start out uh, what. Uh, Billy Crystal and his girlfriend graduate college, and he is going to New York to be a lawyer. Sure. Um, a paralegal. Yeah. I can't remember what he is. He's he's going to New York, and the only yes. reason why that he's shacking up with Meg Ryan, not in that intent, is because she's going to New York too, and she's friends, not best friends, right? She's just mm -hmm. friends with his girlfriend. Correct. Right. Yeah. So he's then they're hitching a ride. Right. So this was 1977. And uh, immediately she's kind of Meg Ryan is fussy, fuddy duddy, on edge, which I get. You don't know this guy, and he is just a straight up jerk. I don't think that's an accurate description. I think she's tightly wound. You know, she has she knows exactly how long it's going to take them to get from Chicago to New York, and how they might want to split up uh, the drive. She, you know, has she just has things lined up the way she likes, and he is much more relaxed you know he's going to eat some grapes and spit the seeds at the window regardless of if it's up or down um and you know it's it's the opposites attract sort of thing okay um, sure yeah i get that but i mean i again i no i did not watch this movie in a bad mood i was intrigued i i knew of the restaurant scene of course i just i'm trying to figure out one of the things about this year of love series for me is trying to figure out what am I missing, right? Like, why do people classify ABC as such great uh, romantic comedies or just romantic films in general? And I want to see what it's all about. And so far in 1977, when they're driving to the diner to have dinner, it, it just it, – that nothing's working for me yet. I don't see well, what the, the big deal is. The the main, I mean, the main part of that drive is Billy Crystal's statement that men and women can't be friends because sex gets in the way, and that follows them through the entire movie. Um, that she doesn't agree with that because you know you she has male friends. He's like, no, they all want to sleep with you, um, and it. it it changes as their relationship changes. You know, five years later, they they meet again um, at an airport. They they you know sit together for the whole flight, and she's still annoyed that he's maintaining that men and women cannot be friends because somebody wants to sleep with someone. Um, and again, like you just they they keep running into each other after periods of time. They're in different relationships. They're in different points of their lives. And uh, they that that's that still like th thread still runs through um, until they are friends and then they have sex and then they are together. Uh, so well, I, guess they, I think you're just speeding that right along there. Uh, I think <laughs> the point of this is really to show kind of how unlikely she thought it would be. 
that the furthest person on her radar would be this guy that she gave a ride to New York that one time. She hates this guy. And, uh, um, I mean, I know that's a strong word, but I, I think she feels very strongly. She's like, oh, absolutely. Just, you know, just I'm appalled and offended by this person. And it was just, you, you know, like forgettable. Five years later, she's it's not even a thing. She's in her relationship. And then wouldn't you know it, out of a small world, this guy out of nowhere comes up and it happens to know her uh, her serious boyfriend, Joe, right? And mm-hmm. it's probably just one of those where, again, to show how unlikely the situation was. And she grew from it because at the end she had said, goodbye, I'm done. Like, this is, I'll accept that this was completely by chance. Um but I can't even do this type of, you know, you're just too much of a, uh, of this guy. And I can't even believe to think that's ridiculous. And then to where it keeps on happening, she, you kind of just have to, I don't know, in her, her shoes almost be like, this is, there's something more to this. This is, has to be something else that I keep on running into this guy, however many years later. And it just happens to be like this, that, you know, it, it, that's what it's supposed to show that it's, it went from, one end completely to the other end. And the adventures in between, I think, uh, really do show that growth that um, maybe some people see and other people don't. Okay, well, I guess I'm that person that doesn't. Uh, I mean, like, I, I find myself annoyed. There is one line in this in the beginning in the airport scene that I kind of related to where she's like, he's trying to figure me out. He's trying to remember who I am, but he can't figure it out. I was like, yeah, because I'm that guy. Like, how many times do I see people? I'm just like, yeah, I don't know who you are. So I can relate to that. But, uh, again, like, what I'm seeing is Billy Crystal is annoying, full of himself in the car. Then five years later, annoying pest in the air, uh, on the airplane. She clearly says, I don't want to switch with you. Like, I don't want to sit next to you. And he still does, right? I mean, she doesn't want to sit next to him. So it's just, it, to me, it's more of a pest. Not stalker. It's just a pest. And yep. I... I think the movie was trying to really get me what? How many years after they see each other again? I think the five, bulk of it takes five place. Five more in years Egypt. after that. So five more years. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this is now 89. And this is where the majority of the movie is, right? In 89. Yeah. So 87, it's been 10 years. They meet at the bookshop. Uh, her and Joe have broken up. Harry has been married, but is getting a divorce. So they're kind of in this this point of they're both single, but not really looking. They're both heartbroken. And so they... They strike up a friendship. Do you believe the friendship? Absolutely. I whew. well, I don't know uh, again, the first time they met, they um, had said, and th- this is the conversation. This is the appeal to the movie, Jordan. Is these types of conversations when Harry says uh, the first time that men cannot be friends uh, to women, just like Sarah had brought up, and then the second time that they met in the in the uh, airplane, uh, bringing that up, and he seems to have forgotten about it, right? And then he remembers it, and then he brings up the amendment, uh, right? That uh, they can be friends if the two parties who are trying to be friends uh, are in relationships themselves. Mm -hmm. But then he contradicts himself because, oh, well, then, you know, then one person will think I'm not enough, and you think that you're pursuing your friendship with the other one because their friendship is not adequate enough for yours. And um, kind of just jumbles that a little bit. They concluded uh, at the, they would not be friends. I remember her completely telling him off at the end. To being like, no, I uh, goodbye, Harry, goodbye, Harry, or something <laughs> like that. And then um, this time, they it was the offer of friendship, right? Where they're they're just like, well, we're in a this different situation here. Maybe we can be friends. Maybe we can do this and and kind of help each other through it. And they go along with it for a bit, right? Okay, so then overall, though, Harry still ends up being right about the whole thing. He says at the beginning of the car that women, men and women cannot be friends <laughs> because of sex. At the end of the movie, they sleep together. They're no longer friends. They're now a couple. They're happily married. So technically, he's right. But this is the exception, not the rule. Like, that's the point of the movie. Like, Jordan, you and I are friends. I would... <laughs> We're... Never mind. We won't. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want to know the answer to that. <laughs> you, you, did, you, you, you kind of threw up in your mouth a little. <laughs> I, and that's not that. it. I, just, I don't oh. think we need to open that that box. Um, but we'll move past this quick, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but see, look, here's the difference, though. Here's the difference is that 
between me and you, Sarah, between Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan is that when they first meet each other, they're both pretty much, I mean, like they're young, they're just out of college, they're kind of single, kind of not, right? They're going to old new cities away from their uh, from their significant others. They meet each other kind of single, not really knowing much of the other parties, right? So throughout their lives together, they keep on running into each other. They keep on having bad relationship after bad relationship, but they have that initial start, that official meet. Right. The difference between somebody like me and you is that I've known Eric for years. You come around, you steal him away from me, and then I just have to accept it. You know, that's just the way it is. So therefore, there is no relationship like that. You want to say something, Eric? I'm not going to let you. No, it was just more <laughs> again at the comment of 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 that's how that love when Harry and Sally's love worked. Like mm-hmm. it, they thought that they wouldn't, but they ended up, uh, you know, going the other part. The, the big theme of the movie is them interviewing these other couples intermittently throughout right. the movie as a break. They had these couples who have been marrying what, like 50 plus years, usually like the majority of them. And in right. just kind of telling them, telling you their story of how they met. And it's, uh, you know, it's very touching, right. To, to, to hear that just kind of the celebration of love a bit in, in the movie. It's, it's nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's cute. I mean, it's it's what it it's doing what it needs to do. I'm not trying to say that this movie's really bad. I know I'm coming off like that. I guess to kind of clarify it more, I think the movies are small because I just don't see what everybody else is telling me. What you two are telling me, what my wife and other friends in my life are telling me. I just don't see it. I actually prefer, and I can't believe I'm saying this, I prefer the movie you did what last month? A fiddle trash. And I prefer that over this. At least there's some like entertainment. I wasn't entertained in Do this. You, I mean, you're a film student. You obviously had to have seen Woody Allen. Yeah, I've, I've seen the, oh, Jesus, the big one in the 70s. Manhattan, Annie Hall. Annie Hall, Hall thank you. Yes, I've, I've seen it, and, 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 I, and I wasn't a fan. I, I, I get it, but you, you can see where I'm getting at, right? Where it, yeah. it just really just seems to be camera on the street. Like, this is this is how people talk. This is how... This is the conversations that they that they have where it's you know it's um it's it's based on logic like it's based on a curiosity of each other and them learning more about it it's uh, it's I don't know it's that's what I see it was I see it as because it's simple the whole movie of it is it's not like some sort of complex area where the camera is viewed from a uh, you know uh, an 80 degree shot on the you know the three quarter of the stage and you right. know the lighting is as such and we got to get this and then oh you know strings added here and then it's it's no two of you at the coffee shop talk right and and, and, and I get that and I guess some movies that I've seen before uh, work for me when they do that this one I, you know maybe it's just Billy Crystal maybe I just it's maybe it's just silly uh, city suckers for me maybe I just love them in those you know I don't know I don't know why. I, I really you don't know. No, I'm sorry. That's a lie. I do know why. I just say that they were bland. I couldn't relate to them. I, I was I was more confused yeah. about why Carrie Fisher was in this movie. She's um, the best friend. Yeah, but I didn't like her in the role because it's if Carrie. It was, if it was somebody else, you would have liked yeah, her better. Probably. Okay. Probably. I mean, oh. Carrie Fisher's not really known for her acting chops outside of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you know. she doesn't have to do much in a rom com either. I mean, she has to give me something. I mean, seem to notice you uh, have a problem with a certain type of actor in this movie, yeah. Jordan. A what, bland? A certain type of people, maybe. Bland, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, mm-hmm. I don't think they're bland at all. Would you call I them think... kosher, maybe? Is that. <laughs> Little, little I called that out. I called that out when I saw uh, the when I uh, saw the star. I was like, "Oh, are they all supposed to be?" Because that's the other thing too. Is that well, okay? So what? Why? Why have that in the movie if it's not anything important? Have what in the movie? Yeah, have what in the movie? Jordan yeah, laid out movie? on us. They have. They have uh, on his desk. Doesn't the star of David on his desk? On his nameplate. That's when I found out. <laughs> oh, does he? I didn't yeah. even notice. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is Star of David. Oh, the, oh, they're Jewish? Is that going to play into something? Like, you know, marriage and everything? No. Why does it have to play into anything? Why just why why would you introduce it? I mean, be, you know, I just don't understand. Wait, wait, it's not like they said, hey, guys, look at my nameplate. 
I'm kind of just I, I wait, wait. found it out. Are you saying you found out in this movie <laughs> that Billy Crystal is Jewish? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, dude, I've only what? seen Billy Crystal. Dude, I've only seen Billy Crystal in City Slickers 1 and 2. I've never seen him in anything else. You've watched Monsters, Inc. I've w- that's his voice. Not him. That is him. No one else could play Mike Wazowski, sir. Yeah, okay. I, I dare you. to. If it's Danny DeVito, no way. He could not sing, don't you touch that, put it back where it came from, like he could. Well, I'm sorry if I don't see that in people. I just see people, Eric, unlike you guys. Hmm. You're the one who pointed it out. No, I didn't. I was just connecting the dots. No, no. Um, a nice little penta star. Maybe, maybe it's a Meg Ryan thing. Like, I just don't know, guys. Like, I'm really trying to figure out why I don't like. I mean, there are cute moments. This, I mean, this movie does get some chuckles out of me. Uh, but like, All right. but uh, how about this? Uh, uh, yeah. no, I don't mean to get you out there, but um, in relation to like the other movies, have you seen like the other like You've Got Mail and Sleepless in Seattle? Yes. Okay, did, is it? Did you not like those movies? Is that this is the Meg Ryan no. effect? Yeah, it must be because I would I would take Sleepless in Seattle over You Got Mail any day. Oh, oh, see, I rewatched Sleepless in Seattle uh, on the plane, and I definitely like. I think You've Got Mail would be first, and then When Harry Met Sally, and then Sleepless in Seattle is my least favorite. Yeah, see, it that's just what seems it is. so far fetched. Right. That I. I it was hard. I mean, it was cute, but right. It's it's silly. I, I yeah. I mean, like I have I've seen those, and I'm trying to look back in the movies that we reviewed so far in this year of love series, and where does this kind of rank for me? You know, but it's like, I, I, I maybe maybe I think it was those two because at least with Fatal Attraction, I could believe Glenn Close was crazy, and I could believe Michael Douglas would do something that crazy, right? Because they're kind of both slimy, kind of you know actors in that role right. these two don't really seem to mesh well together like like i would say watching the notebook right we review the notebook this year can you honestly without thinking too hard right now who would be better with each other than those two i mean those two are, make the movie those two uh noah and Allie, their love for each other makes the movie these two uh just just doesn't make that for me it's and the that's the point Woody right? Allen and uh Diane Keaton. It's the exact and I don't same. Like the, well, I don't like Woody Allen movies. The little Jew guy in in the in the almost confused distress. Oh, the woman who's just I don't know what to. I, I can't believe well, you would we, say that. She's sort we, of they he uh, in in um oh what's the movie French Kiss with Meg Ryan and Kevin Klein. He points out that she's got this like very childlike way of just like aura around her, you know, just the way she carries herself. And I think in rom-coms, she's definitely like that. She just has this sort of childlike naivete that she carries along with her. I can see that. And uh, like, what was, what was one of the cool shots that I liked? I liked them in the museum when they're doing the voices with each other. That was fun. Too much pepper in my poppy cush. Yeah, that's just fine. You know? Um, Okay. So the famous orgasm in the, in the diner scene. I get the point. I get the commentary of the point, you know, like she wanted to not only embarrass him, but you know, also kind of embarrass herself. She wanted to have a laugh, right? She was proving a point that he obviously doesn't know that uh, a large percentage of women have faked orgasms in their lives. And does he really know the difference? Well, I mean, she sold me, right? But uh, I, I just... I don't think the guy realizes that he understands that he can really make a woman have an orgasm or not because he just doesn't seem like that good of a character. Like it just seems like he doesn't really learn lessons. He gets everything that he wants at the end of the movie. He tells the girl in the beginning in the car, men and women can't be friends. 12 years later, they're sleeping together and he's going to marry her. I mean, case what's he closed, w- your honor. Rob no, Reiner saying, gave me your Hollywood card. Yes, you, you suck. You suck now. Jordan <laughs> just me, debunked it from you. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. That's exa- I mean, he doesn't learn anything. He gets divorced over it, but he doesn't really love you- her. She's like the lawn. He's just there. I, I don't know. He didn't she didn't pick <laughs> he didn't pick Meg Ryan over Helen. Like he, Meg Ryan wasn't yeah. even in the picture when he got divorced. 
I think his heart was always for Meg Ryan. I think that he actually... I don't actually think so at all. Him. I don't think either of them fell in love until the third time they met. Okay, I actually... Which was I, 10 I, years I, later. I actually will agree with you that they both did not fall in love until they met in 89 again. Sure, I will give you that one. What I'm saying, though, is that he probably has thought of her. I mean, you never thought about people that you met five years ago or maybe like an ex five years ago. Of course. So he's probably thought of her before. He still wins. He still gets the girl at the end that he really, truly wants. The reason why he gets divorced is because he doesn't really love her. He loves Meg Ryan. What the, they first off, he got divorced. Because Go right. left him for another man. Yeah. It wasn't his choice there, no. Jordan. Because he wasn't involved in it, because he was too involved in it. I'm not being ridiculous here. I've yes, really thought are. about this. What are you talking about? What? I you think... are reading way too much into this. Because he was <laughs> too involved, thinking about Meg Ryan, too distressed. I don't... Sleepless nights in the, in the, in just no, like, honey, that. that's all you do is you think, you not get up that. and you think about this mysterious woman on the plane it's that one time. woman that you spent like, you know, less than a day with 10, five it's... years ago. I think she hit a chord. I, I'm being serious. I'm laughing, but it's just because you guys' reaction was funny. No, I don't think he has sleepless nights. I don't think, you know, that he is sitting there going, oh, my God, if I just had Med Meg Ryan. No, I just think that he just, you know, sometimes when he emotionally needed to be there, I don't think he was emotionally there. He doesn't really seem like a great husband, you know, just from – it. he it, it just it seems like aloof. You're, you're, you're good. You're mm -hmm. Keep going, Jordan. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. Do you actually? Like I don't that? disagree with you. On no, that. you're right, so, you're you're yeah, getting the so, point of the movie is that right, yeah, okay. he do, he's not a good husband. He probably doesn't, and he, you know, like that's that's kind of the point of it is when you say that nothing happens to this character. It's like no, he's he's at a part where you know he doesn't know what he wants. He's he's messing it up. He you know he thought he knew, but he he couldn't, and he just wasn't doing it. He's at a low, um, and he in that confides in this new friendship and is able to start new like he's you know he he admits later on to uh jess to to his buddy bruno kirby um that like he can be his self he doesn't care about anything he can because he's know, not trying to sleep with her yeah so he's he's starting this new he's he's doing it right this time like and then the whole point of the movie is that he realizes, like, oh, wow, I, I, I'm losing this. the only person who knows who I am. And he realized this entire time, you know, that, wow, I, I, I do love her. And he tells her at New Year's, not at just, you know, in the one way, but in every way that he knows by, by summing up their relationship of everything he knows about her. Like, uh, just that that was his growth. I, I thought that's what I got to see is that not this person who's not learning a damn lesson and um, it's not also highlighting his his affairs either Jordan so it's not like it's making it seem like he's some scummy guy just going around sleeping with everything uh, any date that they mention they mention almost with shame because they know that it would hurt the other person's feelings which probably comes also to one of the favorite or my favorite scenes in this movie when they try to introduce each other's friends to each other to hook them up yeah that was awkward why was that, that was so awkward like you clearly tell right off the bat that uh dude with the mustache and carrie fisher like are so into each other jess and murray yeah that's kind of the the funny part of it it's kind of like a life humor you know i mean like an actual definition of it where uh you know, these two friends, they have two friends who are also single and they thought, oh, well, good. We can just match these guys up together, you know, mm -hmm. and see if it see if it works and it ends up that. Well, that's not what life's design is. Life's design is that these two people are going to hook up whether you want them to or not. And <laughs> it's like, you know, you should take the hint, you know, like right. you should be with it as well, too. Again, it's just one of those where the signs were all there. And they probably never saw it or they were unwilling to believe it. Well, one thing I will say that is realistic to me is eh, not the end, but the third act when um, they go to their friend's move in party, I guess you'd say, right? They're helping them move in and they're fighting over a very ugly golf table. I'm sorry, Princess Leia wins that one. Uh, and Billy Crystal loses his mind he's just he's just freaking i'm not going to act it out but he was just like hey you guys are going to sit here you're going to 
you're going to complain about a stupid little coffee table and all of a sudden this this eight dollar plate's going to be worth thousands of dollars there's isn't that the truth doesn't that hit home right yeah he's he's jaded he's still upset about love i think he was jaded before helen by the way too i, I think right not helen was that his ex his ex helen wife? yeah helen i think he was jaded before that he was he was you know billy crystal having them leave college together made kind of sense because i don't think the guy actually grew up from college i think the guy before he meets meg ryan in 89 was this closeted frat boy still kind of like me you're not closeted jordan yeah <laughs> we know that's, that's true i was at a tailgate <laughs> yesterday at 35 years old hmm. but anyway no i mean like i think you guys are changing my mind a little bit which is kind of what I wanted. Um, I think there's some good scenes with it. I just, I just don't see why this is considered a classic. I don't know why some. I don't know why this movie. I still don't understand why. Sarah, you said that you've seen this twice this year so far. Mm -hmm. I just, I just don't see that. I just don't get it. Kind of like how my wife loves Love Actually, our first movie that we reviewed for this series. Ugh. I don't get it. Right? <laughs> I don't. I don't get it either. <laughs> Uh, I think these movies are movies that we've seen before. We've seen them enough times that, one, we know what to expect. Two, you know, especially in this one, you're going to get a happy ending. Uh, you know, the, the two people, the two main characters are going to fall in love and be live happily ever after. It's just a feel-good movie. Um, love Actually is a little bit different. Um little less feel good on that one but uh it, it's just it's a it's a warm fuzzy sort of movie all right fine well since you said warm and fuzzy we'll start with you first sarah what is your popcorn rating for when harry met sam it's a large bag Oh, uh, I, I, I love this movie. I forgot how much I enjoyed this movie, but when I I was literally, you know, Eric was watching it on the way home. I had already watched it. Um, I kept looking over and like giggling at parts. There were I there were parts I think because I last time I watched it, I was probably half paying attention, and so this time I had my full attention on it. Um. There were parts that I totally forgot about that were just funny, um, you know, little punny lines or or quips or whatever, um, and it's it's just enjoyable, you know. The the woman who says I'll have what she's having, I think she's the director's mom. Um, oh, it's the only thing she's ever acted in, um, which is a a fun little. Um, let's see, uh, oh shoot. I thought I had it right pulled up, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the director's mom. It is. Um, so I think that's just a, it's a fun little thing. But yeah, I mean, we've, I don't know, it's a fun thing to debate. Can men and women be friends without, you know, someone wanting to have sex with the other? Um, you know, I think we've all got friends of the opposite sex and, um, you know, sometimes it's a challenge, but oh, well, I think, I think men and women can be friends. Um, so, yeah. Large bag. I love this movie. I would recommend it. Love it. Okay, well, you guys have changed my mind a little bit, uh, but it's changed my mind totally. I will give this ba a movie a, a medium bag. I will go from a small to a medium. But I am on Billy Crystal's side. Men and women can't really be friends. Not because one of them wants to sleep with each other. It's just because eventually one drunk at night they go out to a movie together or go to a game or something, and they're just like, hey, you have things, and I have things, and let's put these things together. This is naturally what happens. Uh, I'm not saying that, so I, I, I kind of agree with Billy Crystal, and I kind of disagree with Billy Crystal. Um, I don't think I ever want to see this movie again. I guess I just don't <laughs> see the appeal. Um, just not my thing. But you guys, you guys changed my mind a little bit on it. Um, I, I did think that they were both bland. I hated the fashion. I'm just not a Rob Reiner fan either, and I like his movies. And, um, really, I wish, huh? Really? You don't like Rob Reiner? Tell me, t tell me some great ones. The Princess Bride, Stand By <laughs> Me, This Is Spinal Tap, Misery. Sure. I mean, like, I mean, he's, he's made some good films. He's no Aronofsky. He's no Fincher, but that's okay. Yes, I, I did that. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. So, no, yeah, I know you're angry with me. No, but it's just medium back. It's fine. It's okay. I changed my mind. 
it's not something that I seek out. I think Dirty Dancing is the best one of the series so far. So, yeah, no. Yeah, medium for me. Eric, what say you? What is your popcorn rating for When Harry Met Sally? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 a good movie. Like, Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it on the plane. I am a sucker for a good love story. I, I, I really am. But um, as charming as the movie is, I think the charm of Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan can only last so long. Uh, it's not my favorite. I'm going to say probably a small... Um, but I don't know. Just because there's not really a whole lot of rewatch on it. Uh, I do like Rob Reiner. I, I do like uh, Billy Crystal on this. Uh, I do like Meg Ryan and this helping good characters. And it's just a good story. Hour and a half. Uh, but if I was going to watch something else, it, I don't know, be another Rob Reiner. It'd be a, another or, or Ephraim. I'd, I'd choose You've Got Mail over this. Um, easily. Uh, but this movie plays out like those simple movies, you know, like uh, what this says that uh, Rob Reiner uh, came to this after the, his divorce with Penny Marshall. That's what I'm remembering from the wiki here. Uh, began uh, the ideas for the film began when uh, the divorce was was going live. So yeah, it's it's just a nice commentary on on, on love and just kind of two adults being in love and just kind of what what happens. It it's cute. Um, I think it's better than most Hallmark movies. So that's, I think, what you're maybe comparing it to. Like, is just kind of like these sappy love stories that people want to compare it to that. But I don't know. There's, there's more to be said about this movie. It's maybe it was just because of the time, 89, and they were talking about can men and women be friends. And it was this kind of intellectual circle conversation that uh, all the hip people were having, and just like, oh, have you seen this movie? And uh, well, what are your thoughts on that? And this is what all the coffee talk and all the uh, morning shows were were buzzing about for a bit. I could totally see that is why this movie got popular, um, because everything else just kind of seems to be like, all right, well, there's the one scene, and that's and that's about it. Uh, I laughed when those two, when his buddy and Carrie Fisher quick got a cab and like they were like gone in <laughs> like less than three seconds and Harry and Sally are just kind of standing there just like did that really just happen I don't uh, want to walk anymore <laughs> that was <laughs> I don't wanna... that was great that was a, a more memorable scene for me than yeah. than the orgasm scene um, but no I, I think this movie is nothing more than, than just that commentary um, story aside which I'll have to agree with you Jordan I mean there, obviously there wasn't much of one but characters started at one and it was a complete story it, but i don't know it's just i wasn't being i wasn't left with wanting more and i'll i guess i'll leave it at at that small I wish butter I could on change, it i wish i could change my review but that's against the bylaws of oh i just, guys wanted, to, I just wanted to suck you into the uh, Wait, yeah you the did medium you bag did. world there and then bring you right back you did you did yes <laughs> because because i wanted to prove sarah wrong I thought we were going to stick together, Eric. No, no, you, you, you suckered me in. Like, Darn. yeah, if I'm going to, I would easily pick another Rob Reiner movie to be my favorite. Uh, I would easily pick another Nora Ephraim movie to be my favorite. Uh, I like Billy Crystal, but again, it's, he's an acquired taste, you know, him and like a Jackie Mason, you know, uh, right. kind of like this, that pushy kind of little guy. Who's just kind of like, oh, come on, you know, well, why not? You know, what do you got to lose type of thing? You yeah. know what? Oh, yeah, go ahead. No, that's that's it. You know what? Last time that something said to me, what do you got to lose? I was talking to a ghost. You got to be uh, better with that, George. I was <laughs> got to work on these. Oh, it's supposed to be bad. That's kind of the charm. So that's well, kind we, of... We could have yeah. said something like... Uh, um, I'm excited to see you next week. And he could have said, like, ditto. <laughs> oh, wait. Or have you not seen the movie yet? I have not seen it. I've no. seen... Um, of course I've seen the scene. Uh, and I know Whoopi's in it. But other than that, no. The but I, of the ghost I, hunger, I hunger for your touch. <laughs> Please tell me that's not a lie. <laughs> It's the song. Jordan, you in danger, girl. 
<laughs> I think that's 1990. Funny. Gotta love this one. Jeez, oh, Pete. Yes, next week. That is it. Might as well just say that, right? We never really announce it, but next week, the ne- you next week. Was... said the movie. Yeah. You said I, the said name it. of the I actual know, movie. I literally. No. I misspoke, okay? Stop chewing my head off, okay? I, I think it's great. I, I, I laugh every time you do you. it. Thank you, because it's supposed to be charming and st- stupid. Anyway, <laughs> it's not supposed to be serious. Do you really think I sit at work all day and go, how can I make a jerk of myself today on air? No. It's just in the – whatever. Oh, no, I don't, the... I don't think you think about it at all. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. I just do it because it's fun. <laughs> Supposed to be charming. But yes, next month when we get together in October, it will be the end of the Year of Love retrospective series. And we'll be ending it with Ghost. And then tune into November because that will be our Year of Love wrap up where we get to rank the best and worst in the whole series. I already have my list pretty much. So if Ghost blows me away, well, we'll see, right? But Eric and Sarah, thank you so much for joining me. Like always, check us out at movieguyspodcast.podby.com. But you know, as well as I do, you don't go to word.com. You check us out on wherever you get your podcasts from on Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Samsung Podcast, uh, Amazon Music, or Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts from. So thank you so much for downloading and listening to us. And we'll be back every Thursday, like always, for another great episode. Have a good night.